yes guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another review big up to every single one of you that's locked in we've lost 2-1 to liverpool at anfield and it hurts it hurts because we lost i think that's about it for me that's about it for me because really and truly you guys knew the energy that me and a lot of chelsea fans were walking into this game with miss me with the list that Hussam had and of Chelsea fans and all the guys talking about title talks and that because it was really stupid to be doing title conversations so early into the season. Anybody with brain cells knew that we were going into this game as underdogs. And anyone with brain cells knew that it was just about trying to get something from this game. And that's what I'm more annoyed about, that we just didn't leave with something. And I think that says a lot about where we've gone and how much we've progressed over the last year or so. Because we remember the last time we went to Anfield, 4-1 on our head top and they didn't even have Salah playing. We, we never looked like winning that game from the start. This time, I actually think we matched up pretty well against Liverpool. It just came down to moments in the game and it also came down to them ultimately just having a much better defence and a better defensive system than us. It's the reason why they're top of the league. It's the reason why they have the least goals conceded. And it's also the reason why I was saying, don't talk to me about no title race. We are not in no title race. Title talk is a joke, especially when the narrative was that we were a mess literally two months ago. Now wanna, people want to say if we won here, we were title contenders. Get in the bin. Get in the bin. Like, fact is, they have a better defense than us and a better defensive system. And that's why we struggled to really create any major chances in that match. They did a really good job of nullifying us. And even with that in mind, I think we did pretty well in the midfield. I think Lavia in the first half was unbelievable. This guy is so press resistant, it is ridiculous. And his passing as well. His passing was really good. He made a brilliant chance for Nicholas Jackson who maybe could have squared, maybe not. I need to check a few more of the angles of that one. But he still managed to generate a decent chance from that, even to his to Kelleher's near post. Caicedo, first half, good with some shaky moments. Second half, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Unbelievable from him. Even Enzo came, out, came on in the second half, and I thought he had a good cameo too. There were some decent passes from him. Um, kept the ball ticking well, did his thing well as well. Just came down to like, when we get to the attack, we overtouched a lot. And when Liverpool are defending the way they are, we cannot afford that. Because as soon as you take one too many touches, four players are already back. And they're all swarming you. Suddenly you have no space to move in. It's now just sideways around the 18-yard box or we lose the ball. And that's why I have to give credit to Liverpool. There's a reason why they're top of the league. There's a reason why slots come in and just instantly started getting them looking a lot more defensively solid because his system works. His system works. It came down to one of the best attacks in the league versus one of the best defences in the league. The best defence won. And even then, like, it does come down to errors from our defence too. For the first goal, Colwell could do a little bit better. Even then, I think like maybe the balance doesn't necessarily help him because he like both him and I think it was Salah seemed to be off balance and it was a bit of a rash decision from him. But like that's where the problem comes in. It's a little bit rash. It's a little bit naive. colwell has been really good for us this season. We're not ripping him for that at all. But yeah, these are the differences between a team at the top of the table and the team that's competing for top four. Um, the second goal. I won't lie, this is where I'm the most annoyed. The second goal. It's so avoidable. It's so avoidable. We completely fall asleep after the equaliser. And it's just naive. It's very naive. Tosin, ball watching. I look at James more than Tosin though. Because Tosin might not be seeing it because he's focused on Salah and trying to read the cross. James is in a position where he can see the run. He can see the gap between him and Tosin. Doesn't do nothing. Jones doesn't even realize how much space he has because the touch weren't even good. That second goal could have been so avoidable. That's where my biggest issue is. But even then, it's just moments. Arguably as well, I think we could have got a penalty too. 
because if the first goal is a penalty, Sancho deserves a penalty too. We could be looking at a completely different game if that's given. No one's even talking about that. In Sky, not Jamie Carrick is ignoring that and he's focusing on the Tosin decision in the first half, which by the way, for all the Arsenal fans crying about, oh, but that should have been a penalty. No, no. I mean, not a penalty, a red card. It was in our own half. It's not going to be a penalty when it's in our own half. Get in the bin. Go away. But ultimately, it, it just comes down to that. We, we make mistakes that they capitalize on. We both kind of nullify each other out of that. The substitutions, like, I didn't even have too many um, issues with that. I think Neto on for Sancho was completely the correct decision. Sancho didn't really suit this type of game because he likes to slow the game down. And that suits Liverpool to a T. They were fine with that because it allows them to bring more players back and it allows them to double mark on the wings. Worked for them perfectly. Um, my only gripe was Nkunku on the left. No, no, we don't need that. We didn't need that. We never needed that. Like hindsight 2020, you could have taken Palmer off or you could have moved Palmer onto the right-hand side and kept Nkunku centrally. Just if you're going to play Nkunku, Play him in the middle, please. He looks so much more comfortable in the middle as opposed to playing out wide. We didn't have to do that. We didn't have to do that. But other than that, like there's only positives that you can really take from a performance like this because it is away at Anfield at one of the toughest away grounds in the league. Not to mention they are table toppers. Not to mention as well, best defence in the league by a mile. And we were the clear underdogs going into this game. Barely anybody was predicting a victory for us, except Chelsea fans who wanted to be a little bit more optimistic, if anything. Like like I said, heart says 1-0, head said 1-1. One, one. I didn't even get that. I got the 2-1. So, yeah, just make it a blip. Do not go into Newcastle and, and still be sloppy as a result. And Newcastle aren't even in good form. It's the perfect opportunity for us to bounce back from a defeat that we kind of knew was going to happen and we shouldn't beat ourselves up too much about. Yes, Cole Palmer, because I didn't mention it, completely anonymous, completely invisible. We've called him the best player in the league, so we, in the league, so we kind of have to acknowledge when he's had an off game, he had an off game. It's nothing more than just an off game, so we're not going to do this overreaction. And again, I've seen Arsenal fans doing, but, 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 but if it was Saka... Palmer's getting cooked across the timeline because he disappeared. So miss me with that narrative. Miss me with that BS. It's a shame. It's a shame. But I see major positives. I see major improvements on the team from last season. I do see this is just a learning curve that the team can improve on. Like, we are phase one. Phase one of, of um, Enzo Maresca. And that wasn't a cooking. That wasn't a humiliation, barely even a humbler. It was just a learning curve. It's something that you learn from, you move on from, you lick your wounds, you assess where you went on, where you went wrong, and you improvise for the next time. And that's it. That's it. It's, it's really not anything more than that. So I hope there isn't going to be too much overreactions of this game. I look at the timeline, to be honest, there's barely any. Like even the likes of Minerals aren't even doing too much after a result like this, which says a lot about um, the confidence within the fan base. Because I, I saw everybody throwing their toys out of the pram when we lost 1-0 to Manchester City on the first match day of the season. This is our second loss, which again says a lot. Our only losses in the league have been to Liverpool and Manchester City. Okay, okay. Let's just work on being able to move the ball a bit quicker in the final third, being able to handle those defensively minded teams. And other than that, like we can do our thing. Like top four is still in um, there for us. I don't see any worries about that. Yeah, we have dropped to six in the league table, but okay, whatever. If we had won this game, we would have been second. So it don't mean nothing. If you man came here expecting a rant or a venting session from me, I've disappointed you. So, oh well, I guess we all get to be disappointed. <laughs> Guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below anyway. Don't forget to hit the likes, subscribe, all of that. Um, Bun Pochettino, I had to add that in the video.
And yeah, yeah, this time last year, we were 11th. So figure that one out. Big up, everybody. Like, subscribe, up the Chelsea.